Welcome to Copy Break Archaeology for our Let's Play of C14 Episode 2. I hope you enjoyed the episode and thanks for watching. Hello there and welcome back to Coffee Break Archaeology Let's Play of C14 Dating Simulator Episode 2. So, just as a reminder, I'm looking at C the C14 Dating Simulator to see how it sort of represents archaeology and also in the broader sense of archaeo gaming. Archaeo gaming being the archaeology of and in video games, video game development and video game culture. Now if you've not read my blog on uh, archaeo gaming yet, I'll put a link down in the description and the second article in that blog series should be out later this week. So again, for for those of you who haven't seen the first episode, I'll also pop a link down in the description, but very briefly, C14 is a dating simulator. We play Melissa Flores, a third year anthropology student going for her first archaeological dig out in Liège in Belgium, 5,000 miles from her Californian home. It is a game all about archaeology, friendship and potentially even romance. In our first uh, let's play we uh, got up to um, where we've just sort of discovered our um, where we'll be digging a sort of introduction to the site and we were just about to meet a new person left on the building cliffhanger so let's dive back into the game so here we are so we are in our little pit here, uh, we're working right at the bottom of the cave where we're digging, uh, which was a, uh, which is a well-known Neanderthal site in-game. And we're working in a layer about 125,000 years, which we're a bit nervous on, playing as Melissa, because it's her first time digging. Now again, I'm going to say this, really this game isn't so much for me a dating simulator, it's more of an interactive story. There is very little personalization we can do with our characters and actually if I'm honest there are very few real decisions we actually make. Um, the game doesn't really have a tutorial and it doesn't really explain how the stats really affect the in-game performance and what options they lead into. Um, so we'll have to kind of explore that as we go and again we may do a couple of playthroughs uh, maybe not immediately after this let's play is finished just to see if we can find out some other endings as well as being a sort of interactive story there's also um, some sort of archaeology mini games well two really uh, one for digging and one for finds cleaning and processing um, which you have the option of turning off if you just want to uh, in enjoy the interactive story or you can leave them on like we do so we get that challenge and puzzle to play with so I said we are week one on the Monday in the game of our eight week eight week dig, and uh, we've just noticed that we're not alone in our little excavation area or square anymore. So let's jump back in. A tall student stood by the square next to mine, already engaged in, in identifying the sediments. I paid him no heed until I became stumped on whether I was looking at one layer or two. Quietly peering at his profile, he seemed rather familiar with the system. I guess it wouldn't hurt to ask him, or at least try to communicate. Um, can I get your opinion on something? Quiet student. Hello, uh, bonjour. Still no reaction. I reached out and gave him a gentle tap on the shoulder. Excuse, whoa. The touch jolted him so abruptly that I attracted my hand. He whirled around and glared at me. Oui, avez-vous besoin de quelque Sorry, my French pronunciation is absolutely atrocious. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I I don't speak French. Uh, non parle uh, non ah anglais. He placed his photograph on top of his square. 
aloof student. Did you need something? Yeah, actually, I'm trying to figure out the layers and I can't tell if this is one. I gently traced the soil and then pretended to pinch the air to give the idea of width. Or two, it seems reddish at the top. He grabbed his trowel, giving the vibe of a serious non, non, no-nonsense person. Once I shuffled out of the way, he examined the area I'd indicated. Archaeology student now. Two, this stratum is more red, as you said, but gradually disappears around here. He etched a small line to mark the ending. I blinked as I recognised the differences and then nodded gratefully. Thanks so much. I mean, I sort of figured, but I wasn't sure either. It's nice to get a second opinion. I gave him a cheerful smile, but he remained impassive. He even seemed baffled when I reached out to initiate a proper handshake. I'm Lissa. I'm one of the, the only foreign student here, if it wasn't obvious already by my language skills. Reluctantly, he switched the trowel to his left hand and we gave a solid handshake before letting go. Kyla Arthur, now we find out his name. It's about the fourth name he's had now. And that was it. With nothing else to work with from his introduction, I decided to bring up his skills. I'm guessing you're an aspiring archaeologist. You appear to know what you're doing. He returned to his side of the square and knelt down, grabbing his photograph. Yes, this is my fourth time here, so I'm acquainted with the subject. And you? Especially since you're not from around here. Well, what option? Ah, let's go. I'm still... Uh, let's go. I'm pretty serious about it. Of course, I did come all the way from California to experience this firsthand. I also love the idea of working on such an old archaeological site. I'm surprised that they assigned me to excavate a 125,000 year old layer. I looked upward. It did seem most students got the upper strata to work with instead. They tend to do that for the students who are interested in the subject. I'll do my best then. Can't waste this opportunity. Most students that ex excavate here picked it as an elective and aren't that interest in invested in archaeology at all. It's nice to see there are still a few, still there are, are still fellow keen students coming. Oh, he's actually smiling, sort of. Since we're excavating next to each other, that makes us square mates, or would that be career mates? Either way, I look forward to working alongside with you. He looked confused, but simply gave a mechanical nod. I like trying to do a facial expression since I can't voice act or, or do any form of accent. He did muster up a small smile, though. So that should be. Right, likewise. Even his last words felt artificial, and I lost him to his little world of microstratigraphy. I guess he values his concentration. I mentally reminded myself to bring my earbuds for the next time. I had a feeling we wouldn't be making much small talk outside of excavations. The rest of the day was pretty uneventful. It was mostly a long wait for my photograph to be approved by Sherry, and then I got hit by jet lag. Despite my worries, Sherry said she would not deduct marks if I napped until dinner, although she did scold me for forgetting my journal. I scanned the tables and manoeuvred to where Sherry sat. I scooted to a spot on the bench and silently started on my meal. After a few bites, I poked at the pasta dejectedly and sighed. Now I really wish Paige was here, and we promised to do so many things together too. Hmm. I glanced up hopefully at Sherry. I felt bad, but she was the only oasis in this unfamiliar place, and I clung to it. I think I'd be the same pretty much, actually. Not only that, aside from Kyla, none of the students greeted me or even tried to converse with me. I guess it was obvious that I didn't attend the same university. Will I fit in? The question was more to myself, but Sherry overheard. Worried? The students here can be reserved, but I'm sure there'll be a few brave ones who'd like to practice their English with you. They're probably too focused from the lectures and the tasks right now. True, I'm sure once we're all used to the routine here, I'll have more chances to mingle. 
I ate with gusto, feeling confident now. When I finished, Sherry glanced at my empty plate. Here, I'll take that for you. Try to get some rest. Her concern, concern cheered me up, and I chided myself for feeling so anxious when I barely arrived. I retreated to my tent and I settled down, contemplating about tomorrow, and a musical tune disrupted the quiet night. It was quickly silenced, but I knew that catchy introduction theme to Ishtera anywhere. I grabbed my 3DP. No, I didn't leave my system on or anything. Was someone else playing? I might as well play some Ishtera. Ishitera, a little grinding will do me some good. I boot up the game and the first notes of the tune theme song blared loudly. I'd forgotten my earbuds weren't hooked into the handheld. I slid the volume down, hoping it didn't start to anyone. The low spirits I felt earlier today melted away to the warm colours of the game. Week 1 Tuesday, dawn of the third day. And I'm enjoying a pleasant jog early in the morning. Since I don't know much about Coriens, I stuck to a familiar path between the train station and the museum. When I returned, I saw people mingling in the open canopy. That meant there was enough time to eat breakfast before the trek to the cave. I swung a leg over the bench and settled into my seat. After pouring myself some apple juice, I grabbed an orange and began peeling it. Question mark, question mark, question mark. That's an unusual name. Did you have a nice jog? Startled by the unfamiliar accent, I glanced upward, greeted by a friendly face. I did. It was short one, though, since I don't want to risk getting lost just yet. I don't know the area well enough. The roads can be pretty windy, too. You think you're heading east and then somehow end up going north. Oh yeah, I noticed that the streets aren't all clearly marked. The names are mostly on buildings. Speaking of names, I'm Melissa. Pleased to meet you. I extended an arm and he accepted my handshake. Bonjour. Enchanté. Wait, you're from around here? Cisa? It's just... Your accent sounds different in English. Your accent isn't French when you speak English. Did you learn from somewhere? I studied abroad in New Zealand for a few years and picked up their manner of speech. That makes sense. Well, it sounds lovely. It's charming accent. Seriously? Sweet as. I was concerned... Sorry, sweet as. I was concerned that I'd be hard to understand, considering it's not my first language. Glad that that's not the case. I'm grateful that you took a chance took the chance. For a while it seemed no one wanted to talk to me. I worried if I was somehow unapproachable. Not at all. Many people here were shy at the, in the beginning, but they warm up quickly. We were actually intimidated by your presence at first. Huh? Me? We all thought you were some high school prodigy archaeologist since you had obviously flown from another country. Eh? Yeah, me? A prodigy? Oh, no, 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 I'm just a regular university student working on her anthropology major. And I don't look like a high schooler. First year? No, second year. Well, I guess technically third. You? Fourth. I've sort of fallen behind on electives, so a summer one seemed the easiest. We noticed a few students getting up and bringing their dishes to the outdoor wash area. DeAndre reached into his back pocket and then pulled out a phone. He glanced at the display. Speaking of which, if we'd like to pass, we should start heading out soon. Cave or lab? Right, now I'm on dishwasher duty, but I'll be working in the lab afterwards. They're still getting around to approving people's photographs, including mine. Again, thanks for talking to me. I appreciate it. It's no problem. I know what it's like to be in a new country and away from your folks. Once we, finished brec once we finished breakfast, we stood up at the same time. We momentarily gazed at each other in surprise. He was much taller than I had expected, near Kyla's height. Now that I think about it, most if not all the students here were easily a few inches taller than me, or more. Dandre hammered his fist 
into his flat palm excitedly. I know what it's like to be very short. Oh, that was the other reason why we thought you were a high school student. Hey, I'm only slightly below average height at home. Andre grinned in amusement. When we left the canopy, I spotted a middle-aged woman frantically asking students something in French. What's going on? Helena, the receptionist here, is looking for volunteers, but it hasn't been easy. I offered to cook all week, but it's not a one-person job. I have a partner for today, but any past that, Sherry did encourage me to participate. More like I would be marked on my helpfulness outside of archaeology too. Hmm. Oh, let's be kind and help volunteer. I can volunteer for tomorrow. Would you really? Sweet as Mel! You said it again, now I'm curious. S sweet as? S sweet as what? Oh, it's Kiwi Sang for awesome, fine or cool. Anything positive. Oh, I see. Then you could let... Then could you let Helena know that I'll sign up for tomorrow? Sure, can do. Thanks. I'm glad my photograph got approved. Now I can finally start digging. So where do I start? From the top? Well, obviously. Right, you start at the top and work your way back 25 centimetres. Then you proceed downwards until you finish the layer. Some people prefer digging back a few centimetres, then work their way down. Either way, as long as you're making progress. For now, we have to remove the couche de merde. And I think I can guess what that means. Using her trowel, she etched a line near the top of the square. The dirt at the very top was hard and compact, with footprints all over it. Well, yeah, maybe. All this is out of context now. People have trampled on it, and it's been exposed to the air for so long, it's better just to remove it all. Couche de merde? Wait, that sounds familiar to Merda, therefore. Exactly, it's the lay of crap, to phrase it mildly. Just dig back 25 centimetres and a few down. When it comes to this layer, I'll make, it'll make working here much easier. You'll still need to document a document for this, but you don't have to worry about the details. At least this will give me a chance to sharpen my excavation skills. I discreetly glanced in Kyle's direction. He must have been super diligent since he had already stripped his layer away. Hesitantly, I took the bigger trowel and started scraping, amazed by resistance. I had to apply more force to make a dent. Do you want to review the cave minigames tutorial? Yes, yes, view the tutorial. Let me give you some tips. Now, before we dig, we should first remove the top layer. It's been treaded on and the soil is now mixed with is now mixed and, di and distributed. You can see the dark and compact. You can see how dark and compacted it is compared to the lighter, pristine sediment beneath it. Doesn't really show that on the mini game though. Not only that, it's hard to dig through and all clumpy. Already testing it out. Someone's eager. Remember, you only need to remove a few centimeters worth. Try it out. Note that the top row has a 5 beside it. This means 5 cells must be chiselled blacked out in, the, in an un, uninterrupted sequence. Since this is a 5x5 five five grid, you can clear a full row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Just like this. Perfect. A clean line. Make sure you don't remove too much or you might be digging into the sediment you'll be recording. Is there a way to prevent that? I mean, I can easily distinguish these two layers, but I'm sure it won't always be this obvious. You can use the tip of your trowel to etch into the sediment if it helps separate the stratigraphy. You don't have to constantly check to make sure that you haven't dug through a new layer. I'll try it here as, pra as a practice run. The etch tool on the left is a useful option. It makes the cells that do not need to be chiselled away with an X. Sorry, marks. So, I want to mark X along all this row. Great, see how there's a zero beside this side, which means no cells need to be chiselled, blacked out. You can leave it as is. 
it looks like the top layer ends here. I agree, now you know how much left you need to clear away. Here I go. So if we just chisel away. I don't like the word chisel, if I'm honest. That's perfect, the couche de Merd has now been stripped away with the and pristine sediments underneath. Note that the top columns are all marked with a 2. This means that this column has to have two cells that needed to be filled in. Since you filled out both rows marked with 5, all the requirements have been completed. If you click check, it will tell you if you correctly chiselled the cells. In the future, you can also click skip to pass on the puzzles you can't solve. Click check to move on. You've unlocked a new journal in entry, Couche de Merde. It looks like I've completed everything. Now I feel like a real archaeologist. That's wonderful. I'll be helping the other students out. But if you're stuck, don't hesitate to ask for my assistance. If you're unsure of a row or column in the future, click on the numbers, uh, numbers on the side or top. The corresponding row or column will be correctly filled out for you. Careful though, if your stress levels are too high, you won't get as many hints. Does that make sense so far? I, I, I think so. Here, I'll show you a little more. Now that the couche de merde is gone, I can finally start digging, right? You sound eager, but your hand is shaking. Are you feeling okay? I'm good, just a little nervous since this is a 120,000 year old square. I'm worried I might accidentally throw something of extreme value away. As long as you s stay aware and don't dig through the sediments carelessly, we'll use microstratigraphic approaches which require high spatial control. Why don't you put point? Why don't you point out the sediments? Oh, dig a little into this one. The separation is unmistakable. Everything still looks brown to me, but here I go. So again, we need two. The puzzle has multiple numbers in some rows and columns. It might seem a little daunting, but you can start by solving the second row. This row requires two sequences of two cells. You can't chisel them together, or you'd have four for the row instead. This means that there needs to be at least one unchiseled blank cell between them. This 5x5 five five grid, so there's only one place for blank square can be. Try chiseling the row now. So there we go. Voila! There, how does it look? Perfect, that's the first the first sediment is the 2AL layer. This is an alluvial de deposition, so it'll be silty and easy to work through. Not many pebbles or grainy textures here. Excellent, now let's focus on the first column. See the first one? You can already fill it in with the second row. So you you fill you've already filled it in within the second row. Excellent. Now let's focus on. The, yeah. So already filled it in the second row. This means that the adjoining cells need to be filled, so you can etch the cells around it. Now what remains? The comb still requires two cells to be chiselled. So go ahead and finish it. Good job. See if you can complete the rest and click on check whenever you think you're done. So this needs one and one, so there's zero in this one, so we can leave this one as zero. So it needs to be one. So because there's a three here and a one here, we've already filled in that one, so the next one is going to have to go into this block here. Which also means we have to fill in that one, which allows us to chisel this one, and which allows us to fill in this one. Now this has to be one and one, so the other one can't go here, so that other mark for this one must go here. We have one and one, one and one, one and three, so this one must go here. There we go, we completed one, almost all by ourselves. You've unlocked a new general entry stratigraphy. I think I figured out where all the sediments are, Sherry. 
or shall we? Agreed. Do you still have your photograph? You can fix up some of the pencil lines that you put down before. Usually, you need to have your photograph approved by one of the staff members here. But since we're short-handed, I'll be overseeing the photograph submissions as well. I agree with the stratigraphy markdown. You can outline the pencil with a permanent marker and start digging from the top once you're done. Thanks, Sherry. So there you go. There's an example of one of the, mid one of the mini games. It may look easy, but the grids do get gradually bigger and bigger. Um, and some of them can be quite time consuming to fill out. Really, it's a bit like a mix between stratigraphy and Sudoku. While you work on that, I have a quick question. Hmm. Questions. Hmm. Did you bring your journal? I didn't forget this time. Wonderful. Also, have you talked to Helen already? She's a receptionist here and oversees volunteers for cooking and cleaning duties. Uh-huh. As you recall, I expect you to volunteer since it will be for marks too. Already got that covered. I volunteered myself for tomorrow. I'm glad to hear it. I was worried since she doesn't speak English and you didn't ask me for help. It's wonderful to see that you're getting involved from the very beginning. I'd like to do my... I'd like to do my share, marks or not. Now, one of the worst volunteering tasks I've had on Dig, which is not included in this, is help cleaning out the toilets. That is definitely a rite of passage for most archaeological field schools. And it doesn't include it in the game. It's disappointing. I'll let you finish your, ta your first task. I'll mostly be helping other students here. Give a holler if you have any inquiries. I personally want you to get used to digging in the cave of the first before you transfer to the lab. Next week you can decide which one you'd like to do, which one you'd like to focus on. Generally students spend one week in the cave and one week in the lab and then alternate. However, I think flexibility is very important so I'll let you plan your days. Sounds good. There wasn't that much choice at, at mine. We had very set excavation, then work on the sort of environmental stuff, then find stuff, and then once you that's what you had to do, and then you could sort of volunteer to help out with more than one and the other, but ultimately the field work and the excavation took priority. Um, and you could also help out in the field mu the field museum and also um giving tours and working with school groups and, and other things like that. Um, there's a little bit of geophysics going on as well, uh, but not a great deal. So there was a little bit of flexibility, but ultimately it was the excavation and the, field, the actual uh, digging, which, which generally took precedent over the other things. Anyway, back to the game. With the conversation finished, Sherry climbed the ladder, leaving me with a remote Kyla. Geez, he digs so fast. He does have experience, though. But I wonder if I can even rely on him. So much for the square meat thing. Mm. They dejected. Pulling the earbuds out of my pocket, I inserted them and turned on my music. Now, let's tackle this uh, mucky layer. So, back to the mini game. Oh, no, not. Back to the week's schedule. So, again, with the first week, it's very interesting because it allows you to choose your own things but it doesn't include the cave or anything like that so you're going to fail most of those tasks which seems a little bizarre but anyway heavy heavy way too heavy why do I think it was a good idea to throw it to the top ah oh, that is a mistake we all make not only that I had to climb up two ladders gripping the two ladders gripping the bucket to handle with both hands I managed to trudge forward to the red screening area Luckily, the one space was free. I set down the bucket and then placed a screen over the container suspended above the tub of water. I tried hoisting the bucket, only to find I was too short for the task. I, ki I kicked futilely at the cement bo block until I realised it was faster to grab and drag it next to the tub. Stepping on the block, I unceremoniously dumped half the bucket's contents, trying not to overdo it. Once I had my labelled cup next to me, I grabbed a hose and drenched the 
compacted soil using my free hand to break apart the globs. While I sifted through the items, I glanced at the person across from me. He tentatively poked through the red screen, unable to determine if any of the objects were rubbish or worth dropping into the cup. His arms obscured his hoodie design, although it seemed vaguely familiar to me. I watched him and he happened to look up, meeting my eyes. Bonjour! Sorry, I, I can't speak French, so I'm not even sure if you can understand me. I didn't mean to blurt that out, but he averted his eyes briefly for a moment. I thought he didn't understand English and didn't know how to respond. Oh, and he's blushing a little bit. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Lots of people share that name here. H Hello. You speak English? Yes, I, f I think I'm pretty fluent with it. Sweet. It's always nice to know I can talk to more people here. I'm not confident with my French at all, let alone Spanish. I chuckled while I waited for a reply. However, he meekly nodded and then glanced down at the wet screening. Total opposite of Dandre, I guess. He's not a big convert. He's not big on conversation. Music is great, but I spent all morning besides the super sociable Kyla. I need small talk, darn it. Let's go with mute all this. First time here as well? Uh, yes, I don't know much about archaeology, so this is all new to me. It's a lot to, to take in. My head is spinning from all the info dumped on me in the past few days. Hopefully all my worries will pass on where, whether I can do this or not, and I can enjoy the experience. Are you nervous too? Quick coffee break. After all, this is Coffee Break Archaeology. Um, a, a bit. For someone being thought for on how to answer, it was barely a complete sentence. I need another angle. What else could I say? Uh, let's be a bit less formal and let's say we love his hoodie. It was going to be a general statement, but then I got a clearer look at what he was wearing. Wait, no way! Some of the design was still hidden by his arms, but I'd recognise that logo anywhere. Oh my gosh, I love your Chronicles of Solidia hoodie. It's based on the 20 masks, right? You, you, you played them before? It was practically my childhood. I love the series, and it was my favourite one. I wonder if this is a very obscure, like the 3DPs, supposed, you know, non-brand version of 3DS. I wonder if the Chronicles of so Lydia is supposed to be like the Zelda Chronicles, maybe. I don't know. And the 20 masks may be a reference to Majora's Mask. Maybe. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Really? Mine too. I've always appreciated the Darker Directions series took with it. Yeah, I love the mysterious spooky vibe they had going. My favourite part was learning about the world through the side quests. I'm guessing you completed the Lover's Quest. What did you think of that one? And he's changed to nerd now. That's not nice. Loved it. It was really sad and I felt guilty that I could not re reunite them every time. I think I shed more tears over that than I did the actual ending. The NPC schedules were super detailed and I'd end up following each character. What a nerd. <laughs> I agree, the main town felt livelier for it, and I liked how your choices could influence the characters too. I'm Shoji. That's a better better name than just what a nerd. He eagerly extended an arm and I flinched from the unanticipated gesture. Seeing my startled reaction, he hastily withdrew his hand and averted his eyes. S sorry N no worries, I just didn't expect it. Here. I initiated a handshake this time and realised how gritty and wet our hands were. He seemed to be aware of it too, and we exchanged an apologetic look. <laughs> Followed by a laugh. Uh, my bad, should have wiped my hand first, not the best handshakes there. It's it's fine. The burst of zeal he displayed when we, when we gushed over the games had quickly mellowed out. We released each other's hands and he silently returned to his wet screening. I did the same. Sometimes I'd glance up and sense he had more to say, but I did not. But he did not articulate it. I already forced enough conversation out of him for now. 
When he was done, Shoji chipped over a wet screen and dumping all the rubble which d disappeared with the water below. After, Sho after Shoji picked up his empty bucket, he lingered by the catwalk for a moment before returning to me. Um, I'll see you around. Uh, he trailed off and then it hit me. I hadn't actually even said my name yet. How rude. Oh, it's Melissa. Right, please meet me, Melissa. Likewise, see you later, Shoji. He gave me a grateful nod before disappearing into the cave. I might as well finish up too. Once I'd finished preparing the plates and cutlery, I returned to the kitchen. DeAndre stewed soup in a giant pot resting over a single burner stove. I'd quickly learned that lunch was always consisted of a sandwich, in sandwich ingredients along with a serving of soup. Finished setting up the tables. Thanks, Mel. I'm still grateful that you volunteered and all. And again, he's calling us Mel. I can't remember whether we said that we were okay with Melissa. I don't think we certainly said it to DeAndre. It's no problem. I'm glad to be of help. He tapped the top of the pot with a stirring spoon to get the liquid off. Do you cook often? You seem rather skilled. I, I don't know if stirring soup is considered a skill. At least you seem to know what you're doing. Mm, I've been cooking seriously since first year of university, perhaps. I mean, before I could basic prep or throw a frozen meal into a microwave. Once I moved to New Zealand, I sort of picked up cooking while living in the dorms. Eating out is pretty expensive and I needed to keep to a strict diet. Strict diet? I'm guessing you work out or participate in sports? You ain't wrong. Training and weightlifting are part of my regime. I'm a rugby player. Oh, that's neat. What position do you usually play? I'm a lot. Uh, I'm guessing you don't know that much about Union Rugby. Not really. S sorry, I know it's similar to football. Uh, American football, but without the padding. Um, basically, the locks provide the power and heights. Break through the defensive, jump high line outs, and it sounds like every position. And again, although I used to play rugby at school, it really, really does. I was a winger. I lost you again, didn't I? Uh, line out. What's line out? Heh. <laughs> well, let's start with lock. Anyways, locks have to get the ball at whatever cost. He extended his arms, pretending to reach for me, and I made uh, and made a primitive grunt. Roar! Aggressive must get aggressive must get possession of the ball. Well, not as aggressive as flankers, you never want to be tackled by those. I giggled, decided not to ask what a flanker was either, and I gently shifted the topic. Where did you learn how to play rugby? Well, I grew up playing it. I even joined a local rugby club, but moved to New Zealand to hone my skills even further. Out of all the countries in the world, why New Zealand? If I recall, you went there to study, right? How is that related to rugby? I, I went there because one of the universities in Wellington offered a programme that combined rugby, its rugby culture with education. He grinned like a child reminiscing about Christmas presents. I got to enrol there for a few trimesters along with free tickets to elite games and gym membership to where the top-notch rugby players trained. Not only that, I got to participate in their practice sessions. I learned lots down there. It was pretty sweet as. It was expensive though and my visa expired. I guess it was inevitable though. Hmm. That look of longing. And now I'm finishing up my degree in Liège. What degree are you working on? English. It sounds all pretty heavy duty. How do you balance rugby in an English degree? You're not just focusing on your rugby career? As much as I love rugby, too much can happen on the field. One traumatic or hard hitting injury and your career is over. E even with the best physio, you may not play as well as you did before. I figured if something were to happen, I could always teach English as a foreign language to a fellow 
The pot bubbled and DeAndre softly cursed as he grabbed the spoon and stirred again to prevent the ingredients from settling on the bottom. Phew, nearly forgot about this. Guess time does fly while you're having a conversation. What's the time? I checked my phone display. About time for the rest of the students to eat. I'll get the cold cuts and drinks out, out now. Thanks, this soup looks about ready. He turned off the burner and we focused on organising lunch. I glanced at DeAndre as he happily hollered to the students coming down the stairs from the forest trail. Sounds like he figured things out. Now I got to focus on what I'd like to do. Scary stuff. Ooh, our stress is uh, increasing up to 14. Oops. I guess 14 out of 100, you know. We might be able to uh, fix that. It's starting to sound loudy over there. I could even hear the hollowing and cheering over the video game music. A large silhouette appeared near my tent and I yanked my ear out my earbuds. Mel, are you around? Over here, I'm in the O tent. He gave the tent flap a knock rattling the fabric. I zipped it open and poked my head out. Something up? I thought you'd rather socialise than hole yourself up in your tent. Want to break some language barriers? He held out a raspberry flavoured beer bottle and swayed it before me. Although, by the end, we're all being coherent anyway. Uh, yes, drinking, a universal pastime, especially for archaeologists. In fact, it's practically part of the job. Should I join in? Let's party, party responsibly, decline for now. Let's party responsibly, shall we? I'll join in. Are there any non-alcoholic drinks available? DeAndre held the bottle close as he tried as he tried to recall recall there's some orange juice and cola i think there's dialect cola, cola that will be great diet got it i'll meet you by the campfire ah oh, now he thinks i'm a bit of a wuss never mind i'll take it easy tonight i'm sure it'll be fine i wish i had a beer after all i could use the extra courage I glanced around the crowds and took a tiny sip from my drink. DeAndre had wandered off somewhere, being the sociable butterfly he was, and I felt like I lost my connecting link to everyone. Usually I socialise just fine, even in a room full of strangers, but the language barrier isolated me. Is this how a wildflower feels? Wallflower. I exhaled really, wondering if I should retire for the night. When I looked up, I noticed a girl standing all by herself. She glanced around before fiddling with her nails. Was she waiting for someone or felt left out too? She's cute. It can't hurt to say hi, right? I approached her from the side and stood a little away from her. When we made eye contact, I gave her a friendly wave and she smiled back. Hello, uh, je ne pas français. Et tu... Et tu... Et, et, et toi... She grinned and pointed to herself, and the mistake dawned on me. I messed up already. Oh dear. I combed my fingers through my hair and shook my head dramatically, as embarrassing as it was, it was easier to laugh it off, and the girl giggled. Uh, je parle français un peu. I speak French very little. I, I speak English well. I can see. After exchanging a laugh, I offered my hand and she accepted it warmly. I'm Melissa. Jean, you are from America? Yes, from the States. Um, I hope you like Belgium. Very small country, not like States. I like it a lot. It's beautiful. I'm glad. Our chat was short but slightly clumsy due to the language barrier, but Jean was patient and we enjoyed the interaction. She perked up when she heard someone calling for her and she gave me a little nod before excusing herself. That wasn't so bad. I really need to work on my French though. I should get some sleep. 
I made it to the tent area when I heard a loud smack followed by gasps and roaring laughter. It was coming from the other side of the building and I muffled a yawn. Sounds like they're having fun, but I don't want to be too tired to dig tomorrow. I sat at the table munching on a piece of toast. It was pretty packed and I, as, and as usual, I was located near the end while the lively conversations took place in the middle. Morning, slept well, I hope. I did surprisingly, you guys were pretty loud. I think most of us retired around 1am, the rowdier ones partied until 4. They will have a hard time focusing in the cave today. I can imagine. Oh, speaking of the cave, I finally will be working in the cave. Nice! Were you waiting for your photograph? Yep, some squares had to have their pictures retaken for better resolution. I may or may not work in the lab longer though. Mr Dupont will be hurrying to approve other students' pictures too. You could always ask Sherry, I think she has some authority here too. Sherry? Sherry Keller, my professor. Oh, of course, American address their teachers by their first name. Is it different here? Really different. In fact, I think some students may take Sherry for your grandma, a professor overseeing their students in an elective, unheard of. No one calls their teachers by their first name and it's always strictly formal if you want to talk to your professor. It's by appointment only. Huh. I wonder how I'd do in an environment like that. That's one thing I miss about New Zealand. It wasn't as rigid and I'd gotten used to it practically and the re reverse culture shock coming back. There's a lot of things I miss about New Zealand. Planning on returning there one day? You bet, eventually I started saving... You bet, eventually. I started saving up recently. Travel is darn expensive. He laughed at my nod of agreement. The plane tickets here alone had cleaned out my savings. Everything else was from begging my parents to fund this trip. Checking the time, I chewed the last of my toast and gulped down the water. I'll see you at the cave then. And failed. Oh no, success on the internet. Woohoo. Oh, we're back in the museum. Are you sure you'll be fine alone? Yeah, my parents got all concerned when they learned I no longer have a travelling partner. I was uh, strongly advised not to go off on my own since it's my first time being this far from home. Although I tried to be nonchalant about it, my sulkiness still surfaced. It's probably for the best, however, I'm sure you'll make friends and be able to venture out more. If you like, I can see if some of the students, if they're interested in hosting you on the weekends. Me? I'd, I'd hate to impose. I know you're reluctant, but it would be nice to spend some time with the students outside the dig site. True, and, some of, and see some of Belgium too. It's a shame Paige couldn't make it. Where are you staying anyway? Oh, at a colleague's, I've known him and his husband for years. I would bring you along, but it's a small house and... She trailed off and I nodded understandingly. I did not want to impose on her catch-up time with friends. With, will the museum be completely lo locked up once Augustine leaves? Everything save the back entrance so you can access it. You can lock it from the inside at night. I imagine you'll be sleeping on the second, f on the second floor? Yes, Augustine had already set up an air mattress for me and I moved some of my belongings. Hmm, I think we've gone over everything then. There's leftovers in the fridge and the Wi-Fi will remain on. I heard the laboratory door open, opening and closing and Augustine flashed me a warm smile. All the other students had left for home for the weekend and it was just us three, soon to be one. Now that they were all ready to depart. Melissa, I assume Sherry has gone over everything? Yes. Wonderful. Although this is the first time in many years someone had to remain here alone. There was an ominous yet playful smirk and I could not help but be wary. Why? They are scared of the wrath of the Neanderthal whose bones we found. I think I'll survive these 48 hours, Augustine. What a brave girl. I hear it gets very eerie at night. Sherry did not look very impressed by that. 
<laughs> we exchanged goodbyes and I heard clicking as the front as the front door being locked. When it got very quiet, I pushed the thought of ghosts out of my head. I have a whole museum to myself. I bet not many people can say that. I can tell I can tell you from first hand experiences that museums do get eerie at night. Huh, the lights are on. Is someone here? What's all this? There are multiple wooden trays laid out on the centre table. Each contained various rock samples along with paper slips labelled under each one. I approached and peered at the trays. Kalkeri dushist greyes grey were they studying something or would this be part of another upcoming lecture? Get permission before handling. I should ask before I start picking up museum property. Nestled against the wall was a small table. Usually it was bare, but now there were a laptop and someone seated in front of it. Um, excuse moi? Oui? Comme puis je t'aide? Je ne parle pas français. Chérie student, I presume. He's a, he's a question mark person as well. He approached me casually and I stood beside the table. Yes, I'm Melissa Flores, studying under Sherry. Please meet you. He offered his left hand and I accepted it with a firm shake. Hendrik. Hendrik Lukenha at your service. Hendrik, the geologist, uh, Augustine's nephew. That's me. I was supposed to be here earlier, but I was caught up in a landslide of work back in Germany. Thought I'd catch up on a few things before Monday. And this is the beginning of his geology related puns. He jutted his chin towards the samples. Were you going to ask about those? Yes, I didn't want to poke around without permission. Can I? Feel free to look around if you like. Merci. I picked up a rock, one labelled calcare, yet the material was everywhere in the cave. Limestone. I placed it down and examined the label fine, uh, and bes one beside it labelled shale. Where did this collection come from? From one of the cabinets? It's mine, actually. Many of the rocks are ones that I've dug up or personally found, though it'd be nice to have some examples to show the students here. thought it'd be nice to show to have examples to show the students here, especially if they can't tell the difference between shirt and shell yet. And wh what is the difference? Here you go. Before I click, can any of you tell me the difference between sh uh, shirt Yeah, I know. Back. Shirts and can you tell me the difference between shirt and shell? Is what I was going to say before my computer went weird. First off, shell is composed of silt and clay, and it's very soft rock. You've probably seen shale at road cuts or by riverbanks. And this is shirt. You can already note it's waxy lustre and is much harder than shale. I held up the sample in my other hand and it felt smoother than shale, almost like glass. This is what you need to keep an eye out for. A lot of stone tools were crafted out of shirt. Fortunately, they tend to stand out like you knew when you uncover them. I can tell you've given this lecture many times. I'm guessing most students here have never worked with rocks before. Yet many are into art, computers or music. I returned the rocks to their rightful spot. What were you doing in Germany? Pretty much what I do here, supervise excavators, example and compile soil samples, figure out the stratigraphy. I essentially chalk out a map of the cave to study the sediments and its history. That sounds difficult. You think sedimentary formations would be more straightforward, older on the bottom and more recent on the top. You'd think, but geology is never that. It's never that against this and easy. Um, how best to describe this? Do you like cake? Of course I like cake. Let's go with really bad puns as well. Cake, of course I like it. He chuckled at my pun. At least he appreciated the silly effort. Or should that be silty effort? 
You'll be able to follow along then. It's pretty sedimentary after all. Oh dear. Sedimentary, my dear Watson. Get it? Because of a hat. What other chances you've tried? Prince Genton Tort, or however that's supposed to be pronounced. Very low. Non existent, in fact. Then Black Forest? Less layers than I'd like, but you get the idea. Yes, I'm familiar with it. It'll work as long as I picture a multi layered cake, right? Exactly. Cakes are like basic sediments, consistent layers and patterns all around. Unlike cakes, stratigraphy is a complex puzzle. Hendrik made multiple slices in the air with his hands, gradually lowering the elevation each time to emphasise the point. Layers are slanted due to how they were deposited, whether by alluvial means, whether in freezing for gravity cave-ins. The list goes on. And then, just as the sediment starts to settle, a river or flood may come in and wash the top surfaces away, leaving nothing or portions of the same layer in an isolated pockets. Badgers and other burrowing animals cut through layers disrupting sediments further, or something drastic could take place like an earthquake creating faults and misaligned sediments. Therefore, it's up to me to figure it out. I hope I didn't bore you. People always said I'm married to my job. It wasn't boring at all. Well, honest. If anything, it made me realise how much work goes into understanding the cave's history. A bit more coffee. I planned for this to be a short video, but I forgot that this week there's a lot of introducing new ideas into the game. So we'll stop at the end of this week as the video is coming up to an hour. It's definitely not easy, but I enjoy the challenge of piecing information together. Since I'm here and I'll be available if you have any other questions or inquiries. You finished the last sentence like a well-rehearsed routine. How long have you worked here? Me? Let me think. Nearly four years now. I help my uncle during the summer and then hop on to a few other caves depending on excavation schedules. After a glance upwards, his eyes widened and he slapped his forehead. Ah, I'm supposed to be in Nama soon. I hope I'd, I didn't startle you earlier. My uncle did mention that there'd be a student staying here on the weekend, but it had slipped my mind. No, it's fine. It was nice to finally meet you, Hendrik. Likewise. I'll be sure to ask if I have any other geology questions. That's what I'm here for. I'll see you on Monday. So there we go. This brings us to the end of the week. So this is the beginning of week two. So we now have some new activities, the cave and the lab. And these are the kind of uh, relationships people you'll end up talking to in each of those activities. Uh, however, I am going to stop the game here for now, as we've been going almost for an hour. I'd intend this only to be about 30, 40 minute episode. So again, I hope you're enjoying the series. Um, again, I will link the um, I'll link to the first episode, or episode 1.5 down in the description, and my um, article on Archeo Gaming. But again, just to reiterate what I said at the beginning, the reason I'm looking at these games is with the focus of how they represent archaeologists, or archaeology, or time periods, and also the wider view of Archeo Gaming, which you can find out more about through my blog. Um, there will be a blog series which accompany the game and the other games that I'll be looking at. You may have seen my most recent uh, Let's Play of the tutorial for Dawn of Man, which is a game which I'm going to look at in the future, maybe directly after this one, or I may move on to a slightly different game first, um, but I'll probably look at Dawn of Man. Again, I'm going to try and keep this as regular as possible. I think we can probably finish the game in another two or three episodes, and then I'll start writing the blog but the blog series may also go on whilst I do the Let's Plays of the other games as well. May need to give me a break from doing those Let's Plays and also a break from doing the blog. And also, I'm not entirely sure how the blog is going to form yet, really, or how much I may want to say about the game. 
Uh, I'll also do a review of the game as well uh, as actual game rather than just as um, an, an Arcade Gaming article. So I hope that all sounds very interesting. I hope you're enjoying this content. Um, this is a bit of fun to go around with my more serious archaeology content. There will be more serious archaeology content on the channel. Um, hopefully, again, there might be another video coming out uh, early next week uh, on the Cadbury campaign. Now, if you've not if you've not heard about this, what it happened sort of towards the end of March, then do go and have a look at it uh, and see what an utter mess that was with regards to archaeology and what it was sort of trying to get children to do and we will look at that in an episode two so as i said until then thank you very much for watching if you've liked the video then please hit that like button and if you want to um know more about what's going on and you want to follow the channel and receive notifications about when i upload do hit the subscribe button and little notification da uh, bell down in the corner. Until then, I wish you all the very best and remember, don't eat each other. Thank you again. Thank you very much for watching this episode. Until next time, take care.